Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with more Skaven Tide goodness. We did our launch video for this for last Saturday, showing you guys the ins and outs of building the miniatures from the box set, what it entails, the goods, the bad, and the ugly. If you haven't checked that video, it's pretty good. I'll leave it linked down in the description below. You can check it out for yourself. I did also promise that I would be doing a minimum of, I think, six videos painting up this box set. I know I'm definitely going to do both of the main characters as their own independent videos, and then two more for each thing. And I did ask in that video, what you guys would like to see. My personal favorite is the Rad Ogre and a lot of you guys seem to agree with that. So that's what I'm gonna tackle in today's video. I'm gonna show you guys how to paint up the Rad Ogres from this box set to a nice tabletop standard, looking swish and ready for Age of Sigmar 4. Before I get into it though, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Like I've said a million times before, I could not do this without you guys. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. If you're interested in checking it out for yourself, it is as usual linked down in the description below. You get access to a private Discord server and extra vlog style videos from me posted almost every day over on the Patreon. If that's something that interests you, check it out. All right guys, without further ado, let's get stuck in and get this Rat Ogre painted. Okay, so this is the Rat Ogre in question and I'm not going to lie to you guys. These guys are not glued to their bases. Even later on in this video, when I kind of texture paste around his feet and I paint all that up, I in no way, shape or form, like really connect him to his base because I think my plan is moving forward that I'm going to put all of these Skaven miniatures onto square bases and use them in the old world. I know they're not very good in the old world right now, but perhaps I can get, you know, a decent opponent, someone who's going to play a little bit lighter and we can have a little bit of a fun themed game. Skaven versus a not so kind of bad Empire army or something will be a lot of fun, I think. Maybe a city fight, I don't know, but I don't particularly plan on doing Skaven for Age of Sigmar. It's pretty much going to be all world. But for the purpose of this video and the purpose that most people watching it will be doing them for Age of Sigmar, I'm going to do it on a circle base for now. These models, I knew I was going to enjoy them because I do like models with lots of skin, lots of fur, flesh. I do like painting that quite a lot. But I didn't quite realize how much I was going to like the miniatures until they were actually constructed. And then I was just in love. I knew these were definitely one of the models I was going to do a video on and I decided why not make it the first video I did so I got this particular sculpt made up. You can give him an alternate head where it's much more armored but like I said I enjoy painting the face and the skin so I decided to go for the slightly less armored one. Maybe that was supposed to be the sergeant I don't know. I don't even know if these guys have a champion but maybe that's what I did wrong there but well. I got the model sprayed black and then I got grey sear sprayed from the top down to give it a bit of a zenithal highlight which is the perfect base coat I feel for contrast paints. We did Gullum and Flesh first and did it on all of the like the skin. And sometimes it's kind of hard to distinguish what parts are skin and what parts are fur. The way I tend to do is if you really pay attention to the miniature, you can see where the kind of skin has split and stretched over his new kind of bulk. Like this was a standard size rat and it's been, in, you know, warp stone injections and all sorts of madness to make him kind of bulk up like Bane style. And he's basically splitting out of his own skin. So obviously those new bits I'm going to do as like pinky skin. And then the outside bits I'm going to do as his original like fur color. Like I talk about at the end of this video, I'm going to be going with Bone Ripper style. Which is of course Thankwell's famous rat ogre, which is an albino one. So it's like a whitey fur. So I'm going to do that for this guy. He's going to have like nice pink skin and then white fur. Do I think it's going to look amazing? I don't really know yet. I've never done it. So we're going to have to wait till the end of this video to find out whether I pulled it off or whether it looks kind of ridiculous. We shall see, I guess. I'm now going in with red. Red's going to be the accent color for me because I'm going to do a kind of a warlord clan uh, skaven army so lots of red armor for things like my clan rats and my storm vermin and i want this guy to tie in so i did some of the casing for his cannon a little bit of armor on the top of his head and his kind of like rags around his waist in red to help him tie in with the rest of the army balthazar gold which is a really nice brassy base coat i'm gonna do for all of the metallic bits except for like the manacles around his wrist and there's some chain on his kind of the center of his back obviously this guy was indeed chained down at one point probably herded into war they have since either lost control of him or since let him loose to go about the battlefield doing his destructive work and yeah, but it's pretty cool so brass and metallics are very simple base coats for all these stages like i said there is only the manacle around his wrist and some chains off his back the little like piping out of the top of his steam engine built into his shoulder i don't know it's probably what powers his rifle or his cannon and other bits like that 
Once again, it's a very quick, very simple technique. I've always been quite a big fan of Rat Ogres. The, the multi-part kit that they used to have is, is just awful looking though. It's not something I've ever bought, not something I'm ever interested in, but the Old Island of Blood clan rat, or rat Ogres were gorgeous. And I think I might have some around here somewhere. I'm going to have to dig them out because I think the two or three you get in this box set plus the two you get from on the Blood would make quite a nice unit of five quite unique looking rat ogres that I think will match each other quite well, especially if paint jobs match. So hopefully I can dig through my old piles and try and find the rat ogres from Island of Blood. So that would be nice. A bit of Sigvald Burgundy for the inside of his mouth. It's pretty much my go-to color for the inside of the mouth of any beast or creature is to go with a really dark kind of like whiny color it makes it really easy to highlight with some pinks later on not really a big kind of standout area but it's nice to get it done kind of neat and tidy it will make the difference if you do it or do not do it all right the guy is really starting to come together now we got most of the base coats on so what we're going to do now is we're going to throw a seraphim sepia shade across the entire miniature just to tie all those colors together help pull them in and help kind of define all the different areas and all the different volumes of the model. And then after it dries, um, I get to do the fun bit, which I find, which is layering. Layering to me is such a therapeutic kind of time. I love sitting there layering a model, especially when it goes well. It can get a little frustrating, of course, if it's not going well. When you feel like with every brush stroke, you're ruining a model more and more, which happens to us all. The trick I find is just power on and power through and you'll be surprised with the result you get at the end. But I don't think that happened in this thing. I think I enjoyed pretty much all the steps. The fur was a little bit iffy along the way. I'm quite happy with the end result, but I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on the kind of the kind of paley white fur that I gave him. You will see it kind of painted in a few minutes. But like I said, I would really appreciate if it took two minutes and just wrote a quick message and let me know what you thought. Because I'm still not 100% sure on it. Was white a good choice? But using Cadian for layering the first stage of skin. As you can see, I'm taking my time. Hitting all of those kind of prized areas. Now, like, things like clan rats. You got 40 of them in this box set. I don't think I'll be giving them the amount of attention I give the rat ogre. But the rat ogre only has three. They're quite big. They're quite standout figures. So I do not want to kind of kind of slink away and not give them their due diligence when it comes to painting. So I will be spending a little bit more time on their skin, their fur, their weapons and equipment. As a three of models on the table, I think they're going to stand out and look awesome. So I want to do that. That's what I'm going to be doing with the uh, these little skin base coats here and now. As you can see, fine pointed brush, and I'm just following the natural kind of direction of all the muscles. All that split skin where it's going to be stretched. I'm not trying to get big solid coats. I just want that nice kind of feathered technique with the brush. Leaving plenty of the other color behind. Now to help blend all these colors in a little bit more. Or to help the skin stand out from the fur a little bit more. With this base coat on I'm going to hit it with a watered down berserker blood shade. Just to add some more warmth back into the skin. Like I said with a really pallid skin tone and then quite a pallid flesh tone. That's not something that I'm kind of chasing. So like I said, a bit more warmth with the Berserker Blood Shade. I usually use this paint between the second last and last highlight of the skin. I think it makes a huge difference. I love doing it. It's only something I've started doing in the last kind of couple of weeks, but I think it makes a big difference. When that's dry, we of course jumping over to Kislev Flesh and doing that last highlight on the skin. So basically the same stage as before, but just less. We want to leave a lot of that kind of pinky skin behind. As you can see, I'm just doing those like tiny touch highlights. All the raised areas, making that skin pop. I love it. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on your favorite miniatures from this box set as well. If you are getting it, what are you painting first? What are you most excited to tear into and get built? Like I said, I'm going to be doing a bunch of videos for these guys. So I want your guys' opinion on what exactly I should be doing for the videos. I know both big guys are going to get a video because that's only right and proper. Probably the standard infantry stuff as well. So we'll do a clan rat and we'll do one of the new liberators. But I basically have another video per side. I've chosen to do the rat ogre for the skaven side. But for the flying side, I'm thinking prosecutors. I know the other unit is in there. I can't remember their name. They're awesome heavily detailed heavily armed and armored guys with the shields and the axes incredible i'm not sure whether i'm going to tackle one of those in a video 
or whether the new prosecutor is going to be the thing that drag my now i'm not limited to six if i get time and the videos are doing well enough they're getting enough views to kind of push me forward i can add a couple of extra videos in if people really want to see the rattling snipers or not the rattling snipers the uh oh my god i can't remember the name of the long shooty guys for skaven it's gonna annoy me now rattling gun no hmm it's only slightly embarrassing i'm sure it'll come to me in a little bit but those guys or do they want to see me do the the big rattling cannon or is it the gray seer or the warp like engineer are those characters something that you really want to see me do I am more than happy to help you guys along and figure that out. Okay, with the skin done, it's time to move on to that fur. And as you've seen, I grabbed Rakarth Flesh as my first highlight color for the fur. I'm going to be going from Rakarth Flesh up to Pallid Witch Flesh for the final highlight. I'm never actually going to go to pure white. But this is the first highlight. I went for that kind of scratchy look. I don't want it to be pure. This thing has basically got mange and it's all sorts of horribleness. So I don't think it should be this like pure it's like a unicorn like skin or fur or whatever you know what i mean piled witch flesh again this time i'm going to hit much more of a, like the sharper area so all the individual strands of fur that do exist on this model and we're going to make sure we hit with the pallid witch flesh and then kind of a light scratchy highlight across all of the other kind of flatter areas to help that skin pop a little bit more Like I said, your guys' opinion on how the fur looks will decide whether I do the entire unit of three or five of these guys in this tone, or whether the rest of them should be done in a different skin color and that the fur, the white fur, isn't really doing it for you guys. I think it looks fairly chaotic and fairly awesome, but maybe I've just been looking at it too long. Mephiston Red is the color of choice to do the mid-tone for all of the reds. So that, of course, includes the casing for his cannon or steam gun or whatever the hell he's got strapped to his arm. And all of that cloth armor on top of his head and any other bits and pieces around the model that you can find and as you can see i'm unlike doing something like space marine armor where you go for those like kind of smooth brush strokes it is all about that scratchy kind of chaotic technique for painting these guys for their equipment it's like they lacquer their armor it's not like they spend a lot of time painting it properly masking it off you can be kind of rough you can leave a lot of scratches behind you can give it a little driver to silver if you want to to really catch those edges and make it look kind of gnarly same with the the cloth you want to have slightly bigger variations in the kind of shadows kind of brighter reds uh, up front and kind of darker reds really in the recesses and stuff like that this guy's not wearing an imperial like spartan cloak or anything like that evil sun scarlet last highlight in the fur and on the the red and once again, it's going in with those very chaotic, very fast moving, scratchy highlights. As you can see, this is the speed at which I'm painting out. This is not like sped up footage. This is just me very quickly going in, adding touches of color just to make it pop. You can see the difference between the, the canister on his back versus his arm cannon. You see that pop of red, but it's not extreme. It's not really vibrant. It's not anything like that. I think the skin and the fur of this model is what's going to grab most people's attention. The red is just to help it blend it with the rest of the army. Rune Lord Brass is then brought in as the very quick highlight to all of the brassy colors, all those uh, that workings of his equipment. And as you can see, once again, working fast, just adding a quick splash of color anywhere where the light is going to hit this thing, just to make it pop. We're going to add a little bit more to the brass in a moment with some oxidize, some nilic oxide, which I think will make a huge difference for that pop of color as well. Make it look really cool. So that is all of the red done in this guy. It's time to grab a little bit of warp lightning, which I think makes the most sense of a color. And we're going to use this on all the warp stone that is indeed on this model. So he's got a huge chunk of it buried into his shoulder and it goes off in a bunch of different cracks and stuff like that. So I'm going to feed that warp stone glow into all those cracks as well to show like the energy is emanating out and powering this big rat construct. And a bit that I forgot about now, but I realized later on when I was doing the oxidize, he's got a big, huge warp stone chunk out of the back of his cannon as well, which is, of course, what's feeding the energy to the cannon and what he's firing out at. So you'll notice that I miss it now. I'll catch it later on. And then the Hillock Oxide, like I said, for all those brassy bits, I go a little bit overboard on this because I really like this the kind of extra splash of color. I do think the skin and the fur is still just a little bit too muted. I'm not sure if this unit is going to pop off the tabletop. Maybe it will. It's just hard to tell with this being the first miniature from the Skaven Tide boxes that I paint. Now, when more of the army comes together and gets painted, I'm sure it will jump out more and look fairly awesome. As you can see, I'm just feeding this into all of the places that water settles. If you're ever curious about where to put nihilic oxide, where water settles on brass is where 
you know, the water's going to sit and cause that oxidization. Here is the finished rat ogre. My first miniature from Skaven Tide. Add some grass tubs to the base and, uh, yeah, calling this guy done. Like I said, this isn't a character model. I think I could spend more time on him. But I have a unit of three of them. If I can find the ones from On the Blood, five of them to paint up. So this is about as much time as I'm willing to spend on these guys. And then I'm going to move forward and start working on some other miniatures from this awesome box set. I also have taken a couple of still images of this guy so you can see what hopefully he will look like on a tabletop. I know I've asked you a bunch of questions in this video, but just as a quick recap, do you like the white fur or do you think I didn't pull it off? I think I should change it. What are the other miniatures you would like to see from the Skaven side box set, both Stormcast stuff and the Clan Rat stuff? And is there any specific color schemes on either of those that you would like to see me try and tackle? If there is, like I said, all of it, comments below, and I will take all that information on board. Okay, guys, and there's the first miniature from my Skaven Tide box set, painted up and ready to go. Obviously, I watched or read a lot of the Guttrix and Felix books, so Thankwell and Bone Ripper have been a huge inspiration for me when it comes to my love of Skaven. And as we know, Bone Ripper has generally been considered to be an albino rat ogre, so that's what I took uh, kind of inspiration from. He has his torn and ripped kind of white furry skin, and then obviously his new grotesque muscles are showing through in loads of different places, carrying an awesome cannon, snarling. Just looking cool. He was a lot of fun to paint. I cannot wait to paint the other ones you get inside the box set. And then move on to more of the models from this box set. So I'm very sure I'm going to do one of the two big guys for this weekend's video for Saturday. Which one that's going to be, I don't know. You guys can let me know. And then let me know what you'd like the first Stormcast video to be. Because more than likely I will do that later in this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. If you have any questions you want in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all future uploads. It's a one click of a button for you. It'll make a huge difference to me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.